You trying to see what they look like? Yeah, yeah. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Peace, peace, this is Just Blaze. I'm teaming up with the one and only Caddy Customs to make one of one shoes for the biggest names in hip hop culture. Our guest today is an LA icon who gets respect on both coasts. He's been a fearless competitor for decades and is never afraid to speak his mind. Can Caddy and I make a pair of kicks that will wow Chuck Taylor himself? Will our shoe capture his influences and tell his story? Let's find out. Welcome to Fresh Pair. The game is in the building, y'all. Man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. All right, so, gang, we sneaker heads, big sneaker heads. Yeah. You know, we got to do the sneaker check. So I'm trying to see what you got on. What you got so, on? Love, What's I love. I got on these Bishop, these two pocket juice. Oh, uh, them is 10, hot. 40 yeah. below. Them hot. Hey, yeah, and you know what's crazy about these? They not as easy to find as you would think. Not and not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I tried to, and of course I tried to get two, but I couldn't find two right. yeah. in my size. So I had to take the pair that I had. But yeah. they, no, they no, like. Every time they drop, they sell out. Like, yeah, immediately. and they like OD comfortable. Like, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Okay, that's what, nice. what you got on? Oh, I got on some blazers. You know, I kept it simple. You know, some gang was coming, blazers? so I had to keep it gang. Some just blazers. You know what I'm saying? Those are all right. Those are just blazers. <laughs> blazers. <laughs> we we okay, know what those okay, are. Okay, I like that. Yeah, it's yeah, hot. Yeah, just big stepping out here. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 You know, it's light work. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Ben and Jerry. Yeah, for sure. Them hot. <laughs> Basically, you know, I did my research on you, you know, looked at your albums, looked at your previous career. You know, I've been a fan since I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know your style is more so, like, fly but just chill, you know what I'm saying? And I have noticed that you a sneakerhead and I know your favorite pair is the Jordan 4s, correct? Yeah. But you know, you chose the Jordan 1 this time, so you trying to see what they look like? Yeah, yeah. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these crazy. It's my yeah. colorway too. Yeah, that's your colorway. Yeah, you definitely did your your research with yeah. the burgundy right here. Yeah, ah. nah, these is crazy. Now, can you tell like what elements on there that rec is more recognizable? To I think you? that uh, well, number one, the burgundy strings. That's like really like burgundy and gray is my hood colors. Okay. Like every, right. every like like colleges. Right. Hoods got colors. You know what right. I'm saying? Yep. So not all bloods just are straight. Red, like ours is burgundy and um, like platinum. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. So I used to I used to have this Averex jacket. It was like gray with burgundy right, and I wore it. It didn't matter if it was 90 degrees in LA. Like I wore it because <laughs> that was like my affiliation. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And so in uh, Compton, there's so many gangs that if you see burgundy and gray, like you know you that know I, that I'm affiliated with Cedar Block. Right. So that was what stood out first. Okay. Got the gray, you know, gray accents here. It's interesting to see a blue rag on here with the red rag, but not a lot of people knew. Like, I grew up in a crib neighborhood. Right. right. Um, in the beginning of, uh, you know, like, my childhood. Mm -hmm. My brother, like, went to school on the other side of Compton, so, you know, he walked through all the hoods, you know what right. I'm saying, going, and so he ended up being from Cedar Block because his grandmother, um, we got, you know, different mothers, so his grandma, his grandparents lived in Cedar Block. So I grew up uh, really wanting to be, like, like, a blood, but because Chicago Bulls is my favorite team, mm -hmm. I couldn't see myself being a crip for that reason. But <laughs> I, and when you're young, now nah, when you like literally when you're young, you you I don't know you you rationalize with yourself and it, like it just be the dumbest shit. Right. It makes sense to you. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was like I can't be if I become a crip, I can't support like. Scotty, you know what I'm saying? Wow, that's, like, that's really how you felt. I mean, well, it's true. Like, if I'm a crib at that time in in the, in the early '90s, like you couldn't you couldn't wear it. if you was right. a crib, you could not wear red. Now, right. you know, you see Snoop, he might have on red. Me, right. I might wear the Dodger cap. Like, it's just a little different. But back then, you could not. It was right. just you, it didn't make sense. Right. Ah. Um. And so, yeah, it's cool to uh, see that on there. And then, you know, the red trend, the so. red rag, yeah, the Compton All Star, the tat on my neck. That's and fire. that was that was a challenge. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I didn't know whether I should go with the red star or the blue star. Cause you know the original Chuck Has got the blue star, star, but I'm like, he got a red star on his I face. I mean, after you threw the blue rag on you could have made the you, know, <laughs> you could have made the whole shoe blue. Okay, you okay, know what okay, I'm okay, okay. But yeah, nah, nah, these are fly. I love the, I'm glad. the uh I'm the glad. old to uh the documentary on here. That's nice. dope. Definitely. Coming back to the uh the Compton All-Star, you know, um obviously the, the Chuck Taylor is the quintessential new um LA shoe. Mm -hmm. Um what does that shoe mean to LA culture? It's everything. Uh, it was, it's here. It's either um, 
It's either classic Chuck Taylor, any color, I guess, whatever color associates um, you with, okay. uh, you know, where you're from. And then there's the Cortez, um, which is right. mainly uh, like a, a Mexican shoe. Yeah, you know what I'm true. saying? Like Mexicans wear Cortez more than anybody else. But still, um, you'll see, uh, you know, Crips and Bloods, you know, going through the burgundies and the blues and navy right. blues of, of the Cortez shoe. But the Chuck Taylor itself um I don't even know the origin of that with gang ba- gang bang, and I just right. know that ever since I can remember that, what that it, was the that's what it was. I think that um, like if I can just assume that it's probably from a financial standpoint, it's probably the most affordable right. yeah, hood true. shoe. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Because Chucks was like 19 bucks. Yeah, they right. were. It was going up. It was just 20, and so right. you know you had a dub, you get some, you know yep. fresh, and then yep. you uh, at the Compton Swap Meet or the Avalon Swap Meet, you can go get fat laces, red or blue. Mm-hmm. You put them in there, and now mm-hmm. you step. Now yep. you big, you big stepping. You know right. what I'm saying? So yeah, the converse is is everything. Here. Yeah. So, so many things on this shoe were LA based. One of the things that I wanted to ask you, we always ask, I guess, top five something relevant to where we are, to who they are. So, for you, top five LA rap albums ever. <sighs> top five LA rap albums ever. Mm. Number one, The Chronic. Okay. okay. For me, and, right. and this is for me, right? right like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the Chronic at number one, um, just because in order of appearance is important to me, because every everyone is motivated by things that happened before them. Um, I have to go with Doggy Style yeah. after that, and I mean, I feel like like the Chronic was low key Snoop's first album too, Definitely. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then Doggy Style after that, it would have to be the documentary, just because of what that album did. I I did that. Um, in a time when LA, where there was where I was the only, mm-hmm. the biggest rapper, you yeah. know what I'm saying, in LA, and I held it down for almost 10 years alone. Yeah. The whole coast, the beast that came with it, That's wars with, you know, who, whoever I went to war with. Um, at number four, for me, it would have to be Good Kid, Mad City, because mm, okay. um, I watch I watch Kendrick and his essence um, going from literally a good kid in the mad city how to, how he fought through being non-affiliated and and staying the course right. um and then putting out that album which was the one that should have won the grammy to me not saying a damn i listened to damn yesterday it was incredible again right. huh. but um good kid mad city was uh, uh an amazing first project and then at five i just i like i feel inclined to say death certificate just because of nice. what that was to me so for you personally my five yeah okay that's a yeah. strong top five it is. um you kind of shocked me with the death certificate, not because it's not a good album. Right. Um, I feel like a lot of people uh, go for uh, America's Most. Why would you choose Death Certificate over America's Most? When Cube dropped um, death, uh, death Certificate, I was at a time in my life right. where I really was like going through something, you know okay. what I'm saying, with like my family and the little riffs, and I just felt like that album like just made... Um, like made me feel like into being independent and being on your own and 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 fighting through shit yeah. is just it's cool and okay. And America's Most was you know was crazy too, but that's right. for me. You know what I'm saying? You got these uh, the, the signature, the uh, the rims on the drips. We actually had to do them twice. We did it on the tongue and on the yeah. hand. Yeah. Now originally I wanted to try to get. It was just, we we worked on this shoe until like the very, very last minute, yeah. up until yeah. last night. Up until last night. And we was, I was really trying to get the evolution from the gold <laughs> to the to the silver. Right. Um, you know, from the two different from uh-huh. the two different covers. Yeah. Let me ask you, uh, was there a certain um significance, <laughs> um, A to just sitting on the rims, but also the other uh, changing of the colors? Um, the so albums? putting my son on the album cover mm-hmm. was an idea that I wanted to I mean, that I can't, I mean, I didn't come up with it, but I, re- I really wanted to do that because of the Biggie album. Right. Because, okay. like I said, the person before you always inspires. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, and I and I thought, I didn't know who, I thought that was uh, like Biggie's baby on the album. You right. Know, you in Compton, there's no internet, you don't know the backstory. <laughs> but when I saw that, I thought it was like Biggie's baby. But right. it was like a, and I think it's a kid that wasn't even related to right. Biggie. I it's thought just it was Biggie's baby. I thought it was Biggie after that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, when I had, uh, you know, when I first signed to Dre, like my kid's mom was pregnant with my first son. And so when it got time to shoot the album, like I wanted to do that. Um, it took us 10 hours to get wow. him to stop crying. Wow. 
Uh-huh. We we tried to sit him in front of the rim, but those were all the crying pictures. Right. Once we took the rim out and I brought him back in, he took the right picture. So then we had to insert the rim. I didn't really like that because I felt like it's Photoshop. Yeah. It's not, right. it's not real. Try. But they it's were like, it's going to be okay. This is right. how hip hop. It's an iconic cover, though. Everything in hip hop is fake. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> shit. I'm like, really? Well, fuck it. Let me see how you do it. And at this time, again, I didn't know about Photoshop. Mm-hmm. So when he put the RAM behind him, I'm like, shit, still look fake. But then <laughs> we put the album out, nobody cared. And really? so I nobody was just knows. like, yeah, yeah cool. I, I so, would have never known that he that he wasn't actually sit, really sitting in front yeah. of him. Exactly. Yeah. But you go back and look now. You're going to yeah. be like, yeah, nigga, yeah, cut, nigga. Like, who, who cut this shit out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, but so you remember back in the day when, like, we had CD cases. Mm-hmm. And so I would have, like, all my snoops all my Nas's like set up in those little four slots. And right. so I always wanted to make sure that my album covers were in line with someone's collection. So right. so it had to evolve, you know right. what I'm saying? So the next album, Doctor's Advocate, my son was a little bigger. So instead of sitting in front of tire, he's, you know, holding to. Yeah. And then I right. brought in my newborn, uh, my, middle, my middle child into the fold on the back of the album. And it was just like, always wanted to make sure that people knew that outside of everything fucked up I was actually doing out here at that yeah. time being young, I still loved my kids oh, and my yeah. family and that I was just going through, you know, my my, my motion. Yeah, you definitely make that know that you love your kids, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So that's what's up. There's a couple things I want to circle back to that because you've mentioned them, but we haven't discussed them on the shoe. But one thing that we do have here is uh, this is actually the fence. Can you, can you guess what that is? Yeah, it just, it, it looked like the fence on our bridge. Um, yeah. Yeah. And your documentary 2 album. Documentary 2, yeah. 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 So a big... <laughs> A big thing with that album, uh, with the art and everything, was was unity. You know, you had um, uh, the red and the blue. Um, there was one version, if I'm not mistaken, that had like I think was it a, ro- a red rose and a blue rose. Yeah. yeah. I know that you you were in a place where you wanted to bring things together. Right. Re- bring folks in. What what prompted that? Again, uh, we can go back to like the beginning of uh, you know our conversation when I told you that I grew up in a crib neighborhood, and so I, when I say I grew up there, I mean those were my you know my friends. Yeah, so right. once I decided to um, you know uh, be a blood, um, it didn't it didn't change how I felt in my heart about right. my friends. Right. Now, I was loyal to the soil as much as I could be just as long as it involved people I really gave a fuck about. You know right. what I'm saying? So I've always, since the beginning of my career, if you go back, everything with me is like meticulous, it's calculated, and it's it might seem reckless, but there is like, a, a, you know, I had a plan in motion. So even on my first, on the West Side Story, which is the first song I ever released on Aftermath, mm-hmm. the first thing I said was Crip Niggas. I put them before, right. um, you know, I was like Crip Niggas, Blood Niggas, because I was already a blood, so I didn't right. need to unpack that first. Right. I just said Crip niggas because I wanted niggas to know that, like, I ain't forgot that y'all exist, too. So let's mm. just get y'all out the way because I'm about to do a whole lot of blood <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so nah. So that's why it was important. It's always been important to make sure that um, Batman knows that the Joker is right. there, too. You right. know what I'm saying? And there is no Batman without the Joker. Without the like, Joker, you have right. to have, you know, yin and yang. So um, for me, that's what it was. It's always been, uh, you know, a Crip and Blood and, a, you know, a Mexican thing out here. To that point, you, you know, you have your affiliations. Snoop has his. Was one of your first tours ever early in your career with Snoop? Yeah. yeah me and Snoop's history is this. Um, I pulled up on Snoop at a gas station and uh, on Lancashire in the Valley when I was uh, trying to just figure out uh, I was sleeping in my car, right. and I had my I had like a, a stack of my demo, you know, my demo CDs um, in the back, and uh, my you know my pit bull had ate out my back seat, like wow. it was just the orange foam back there. So right. I was just riding around. I would I would really post up on Melrose and just hand out my demo and all of that. But I was at a gas station and Snoop pulled up, you know, in a bit, you know, SUV with his homies hopped out, and uh, he I gave him my demo, and he was like. I know, I heard, like, I heard about you. Oh, that's and dope. so I was like, yo, you know what, what niggas do. I'm like, I want to do a song with you. <laughs> this nigga Snoop was like, well, come on, cuz. Uh- we went straight to the studio and he got on a song. Wow. And that was, like, what prompted me to really get down with, like, I would play that song, end up playing that song for Suge, and Suge had, you, you know, a different opinion about it, but he wasn't opposed to, like, me doing music with Snoop. Right. He was just far removed, and their relationship was weird. I took it to Diddy. That's what got me. Diddy took me around the world. We never hit the studio. This right. nigga likes to party <laughs> crazy. Right. Um, and all I was asking Puff was like, can, like, can we go to the studio? Like, Because I'm thinking, like, niggas go to the studio. Yeah, right. Yeah. Puff party. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, man, um, it was just like me and Snoop, 
he looked out for me from the first day that I met him. So when he asked me, when, when after the documentary drop, he asked me what I go on tour with him. And I was right. like, you know, of course. Right. And uh, I went on tour with Snoop and I brought my whole hood with me and he didn't mind, but he brought his whole hood with him. So it was like the most Crip and Bloods I ever seen in one place at one time wow. on that tour, which later on would prompt me to bring Kendrick and Nipsey mm -hmm. on my tour. Mm -hmm. And I had, and it was, I mean, you know, a lot of people see like, you know, me, it, it was my tour and I, it was the LAX tour and I brought uh, Nip and I brought Kendrick and it was a lot of, I got, I caught a lot of uh, like heat because my homies wasn't with Crips being on the tour. Right. And so it was a lot of fights backstage. A lot, I lost a lot of homies. I lost a lot of friends, but like I said, I'm loyal and I really had a lot of love for Nip. Um, and, and of course Kendrick, you know, Kendrick from the West side of Compton. So it was no problem there, but, um, um, yeah, Nip, man, I had a lot of love for Nip. And uh, so, yeah, I took him with me. And so it's always, it was always been important for me to, you know, make sure that, you know, if I mention Batman, that I mention the Joker. No doubt. Um, Caddy, you want to explain a little bit about your paint process? Yeah, so basically, this shoe was an all-white shoe. So creating this shoe for you was extremely, not difficult, it was very fun. Right. So, you know, of course, the... The red paisley is the blood. You know, this is representing the documentary two album. And you see that that Chuck Taylor symbol right there, uh -huh. but it say Compton. Yeah. That, that's hot, right? Instead yeah. of saying Converse. Nah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's my tattoo. Yeah. Or did so you know that? Where? I got a tattoo on my neck. I think it's on this side. Or I did not know that. Yeah, it's, it's exactly like that. So that so was you didn't God. See that. You know no, what I'm I swear to God, I ain't seen that. I that's didn't know crazy. that either. Yeah. And I knew that's why I was all like, dang. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, and we thought we was on the show. <laughs> nah, that's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we was doing something completely you new. No, that's one of my first tattoos. What? Okay, wow. so that's dope. That's you definitely, you definitely seen that. Yeah. Okay, so but and that's another reason why we put the blue paisley too right. is because you know we saw that you were all about you know unity and you know and like. Not forgetting about the Crips. You grew up with the Crips. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's a part of your life, too. You know, yeah. and Nipsey, I know Nipsey played it. You know, that was your friend, mm -hmm. you know, at a time. And, you know, I saw an interview where, you know, when you first met him, how he was walking across the street, and you yeah, was like, It was. Hey. So I, I pulled up at a light, and I was pulling up at a light. And you know how, like, you just, the light is green, and you're like, motherfucker, please don't turn yellow. Like, mm -hmm. please don't turn yellow. And it was, a, it was a, I think it was a, like a gray Civic in front of me, and I was hoping they pushed through the light, because if it turned red, I'm burning through the light. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to stop on Crenshaw and Slauson. Right. Like, I'm, uh, you know, I got my gun on me, I'm in a Range Rover, I'm game, like, I'm right. blooding, like, I'm, I don't want to <laughs> stop here. Like, right. God. Of all places. Right. The 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 Civic hit the hard break oh. on the yellow, <laughs> and I'm like, Man. so I look to the left. It's like 13 60s, 13 like 13, mm. or 12, 13. Mm -hmm. Nip is in the front of them and they start walking across the street. And 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 like Slau Crenshaw and Slauson is a really big intersection. Yeah. So the lights take hella long. And they got a and they got the one where like they let the turning lanes yeah. go and that <laughs> motherfucker be long as shit too. So this you could be at this light for two, three minutes, like right. on everything. So um yeah, Nip is walking across the street and um he gets um he get like probably where that wall is, and I'm like, I I cock it. Because mm. I'm like, I'm I'm all about like I like I tell everybody all the time, like I got bail money, I don't have hell, I don't have get out of hell money. And, and I know it's tricky in LA, so I gotta like I have to shoot first because I can either do life in prison, which I'm not cool with, but it's right. better than doing yeah. the box. Exactly. Absolutely. So uh, so I'm ready. Nip get all the way close up to the car. Mm. And he like, yo, what up, cuz? My name Nip, neighborhood Nip, and I rap. And I'm like, you know. He got the CD in his hand. I'm just in my mind. I'm like, cool. <laughs> but he see, but he see the strap on my right. on my lap. So that was his moment to know, like, damn, like he really with right. the shit. Yeah. So he probably walks away from that and be like, all right, well, I really fuck with him now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm like out here doing it. I'm not faking it. And so he gave me the CD, and then he turned around. And he was like. You ain't gonna frisbee it, is you, cuz? <laughs> and I'm like, nah, I'ma listen to it. You got your number on it. He like, yeah, it's on there. But like, the his his demeanor was like he wasn't looking for a handout, and right. he wasn't excited to like that right. I took it. Right. He just was like, nigga, I'm really letting you know that I'm coming next. Right. 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 So that night, I, um, you know, I brought him to the studio. Big U brought him. He okay. came with okay. Big U, and just like Snoop. Because Snoop did that for me, I felt inclined to do that for right. Nip. So I did right. like three songs for Nip. Um, he put uh, Day Roll on, you know, his 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 first project, and that was like, you know, a super LA classic. But yeah, I just been trying to like look out and do what the guy before me did, and trying right. to emulate uh, that type of unity. So yeah. Speaking of hip hop, I want to circle back around to the uh, back to the beginning again. 
um, and actually, if you peep the symbols, the do no harm symbol, it's actually, uh, you know, that's the medical symbol for doctors. Right. Mm -hmm. So but if you peep, it has the chronic leaf. Mm -hmm. I ain't yeah. peep that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so well, yeah, we well, see from my angle, the light ain't hit the chronic leaf <laughs> right. I was supposed to. Right. <laughs> so that brings us to uh, you being the doctor's advocate. Yeah. yeah. You know, and your and your work with Dre. Um, he's so instrumental. You know, in your career. Um, what's your guys' relationship like today? Shit, after after my last interview, it's probably like paper shred, paper shredded. Oh. Mm. But um, but but that doesn't bother me, okay. um, because I've always stood on my own. I've always been the bad seed. Um, I've always been my own man. Um, and so Dre, um, although um instrumental as he was to the introduction of my career, um, to to the naked eye or to someone on the outside who is not me. Like nobody can tell me what my relationship is with Dre. Only Dre can tell you and only I can right. and only I can tell you. Um, and nine out of 10 times, he's not gonna speak on it. You know what I'm saying? But me, um, I've always been an open book. So yeah, even though Dr. Dre signed me, um, and this is not to take away from anything that Dr. Dre is, because I told you my number one, my favorite album is The Chronic. Right. My favorite rap group is N.W.A. So it's like, I'm never shooting shots at Dre. I'm only telling my story. Right. And my bad if you're in it, but you're in it. Right. <laughs> so it's like with Dre, you know, yeah, Dr. Dre um, signed me to Aftermath, um, but he wasn't pressed to put put my album out. That was 50 coming in and really, you know, like, yeah, like, he dope as fuck. Like, you know, like, I want him in G-Unit. And Jimmy Iovine thought that was a good idea, too. So they put me in G-Unit, but I did not want to be in G-Unit. So mm. that's why I'm not on a G-Unit album or you don't see me. You didn't see, didn't see me on my career with the group when you saw the group. Right. I was just that kind of official, unofficial member. Mm. But me and 50 worked so good together that the hits were the hits. Like, Dre didn't do any beats on a documentary. Wow. Like... But I didn't say he didn't oversee it. I was like, he definitely oversaw the hell he, out of it. Like, that is, you, yeah. want, you want Dre to oversee anything mm -hmm. because he's a mastermind when right. it comes to that. But as far as like doing a beat for the doctor for the documentary, like no. And I've never had a Dre beat in my career. Wow. And and again, with all the influence and all the appreciation that I have, uh, you know, for Dr. Dre, the fact is the fact. So, you know, a bunch of dope producers that Dre had under him or whoever, you know, Scott Storch, the Just Blazes, the Swiss Beats, the Timberlands helped me put together my classic album. Right. And I physically had to get on a plane and come to baseline yeah. to work with you and get these things done. I did the same thing with Storch. I did the same thing with Swizz. I went to Miami and worked with Timberland. So I can't give Dre credit for the Just Blaze beat. Yeah, that's But true. it's a Dr. Dre executive produced album, but people just don't understand the underlinings and how the business works. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I've never had a song with Dre on it and Dre been in my video. He mm. got, Snoop has a ton. M has a ton. I don't have none. Mm. So I'm saying, when I say that Ye did more more for me than Dre, it's like me and Ye did Dreams. We did Wouldn't Get Far. Ye was in the video. We just did Easy. That right. was current and on and, and Billboard charted. So it wasn't a slap in the face. It was just me telling the truth. It's interesting, you know, because perception is everything. And obviously your lived story is your lived say story. Say that again, man, because there's somebody out there. I need to hear that. Perception Absolutely. is everything. Absolutely. But the reason why I say that is because on my end, like how you said that you felt like Dre wasn't pressed to put out your album. On my end, that's all he ever called me about. Right. And when we'd be in the studio, like he would literally sit there and play the album over and over. You know how he is. He'll listen to a song well, 20 times over. That's a different time. Right. That's a that's a different that's at a different time right. on that timeline. Right. That's when the album is done. It's done. Because right. after I went to Connecticut and I did uh me and Fifty did Hater to Love It. Mm -hmm. And um I, we did Hater to Love It and then Fifty jumped on um West Side the West Side Story right. Hook. Um I had Snoop on there. Okay. At first. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then Fifty jumped on the West Side Story Hook and we did Hater to Love It and we brought those songs back. Trey was inclined to put the album out because now now for whatever there's, reason, there's something it had, you know, a, a value to him. Right. And, I, and, and I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, he played Hater to Love It on a yacht with uh, with Hove and B. And Hove was like, this needs to come out. And then Dre came back and even mm. was even more, you know what I'm saying, inclined to put the album out. So, yeah, I'm not saying what you're not saying is true. You That's know, why I said perception is everything. Yeah, 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 it is. But, yeah, so at that point, yeah, he was. But I was in this, I was in this story 
sitting on the shelf right. with uh, with Brooklyn and Joe Beast. I was and, there. I was there for all of that. Of course you was, because we was in Encore mm-hmm. at the top playing video games, because that's what we do. We're right. gamers at heart. But, like, yeah. So, but your part of my story is my part of my story. Right. And then my part in your story is just, I'm just the co-star in your story, but your story is your story. So, right. yeah, it's like once they gel together, then we have the full movie and if it adds up, then cool. Everybody appreciates 100% of the truth. Yeah, because Dre used to call me for shoes all the time. I still be yeah. like, yo, not right now. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chill on the shoes. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm busy. I gotta do dang shoes. Yeah, but, no, I'm and, and just, I'm I'm and, and, and I'm not saying that this is Dr. Dre's fault, but what I'm saying is you know artists be sitting on shelf and Shit, sitting on, you know, I mean, you know, the Detox right. mm-hmm. is an album that has been worked on and been getting worked on for years and 30 years or something like that right. and never came out. So things get shelved when they're, it's, it's a priority. But what I didn't know at that time was it's a business. It wasn't my time yet or for whatever reason, but that doesn't mean that I, the shit didn't like hurt. Right. I wanted to come out. I wanted, I knew, I knew who I was. I knew I was great. I told Puffy that. I told Suge that. I, I, I ended up in Dre's camp and I told Dre that. And Look at me. I'm here still, 20 years later. But let me ask you this, but if he had put it out in the period before you met me, that trip to Connecticut, and before, because you were there there working for a while. Right. Had that original version of the album you were working working on to come out, like, it might not have been what ended up becoming the documentary. It definitely would have. I am the documentary. Mm. That's my baby on the cover. That's my voice on the album. I shot niggas to get to that point. Niggas shot at me to get to that point. I joined the gang and got my face bloodied up and stomped out by niggas to be cut, to tell that story. The right. documentary was a story about whose life? My life. Right. So it didn't matter if I signed a Dr. Dre. Aftermath wasn't the reason that I was successful. It's just the reason I was successful. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because if I would have signed to Caddy Records, the fire in my heart, man, the fire burning in my heart was going to see that I was one of hip hop's elite, right. regardless of who I signed with. And that's why I got signed. Isn't that why you sign niggas? Mm-hmm. Because you think that they're going to be the next whatever you think they're going to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? Somebody signed Lil Durk. Somebody signed Lil Baby. But when they signed Lil Durk and Lil Baby, they didn't know. They just thought. Because you don't, you just don't know until it happens, right? Mm-hmm. But it didn't matter if it was going to be on Aftermath or Bad Boy or Death Row or Independent. Like, I was going to be the game at this magnitude no matter what because I knew that I was. Right. And I was going to push it because I'm out here moving for me. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So one of the things we always come back to when we're designing these shoes <laughs> is, um, you know, kind of one of our, our unofficial slogans is, um, you know, we stand on our foundation, right? So... Every uh, every episode, we try to come up with a very fresh insole that represents something that's part of your foundation. I'm going to let Caddy do that. Yeah, so basically with the insoles, we did something really dope. Um, but we want you to see it, too, on this one. Oh, yeah. You see that? Yeah, I love that. This is the Compton one. That's, you know, standing on your foundation. You're from the city of Compton. Right. And this one, you know, represents, you know, Nipsey, you know. Oh, yeah. Your, your that. relationship with him. Yeah. And what I wanted to know is what is your you know, your favorite or best memory of Nipsey? My favorite memory of Nip was um, our last conversation. Um, we had we had a conversation and I was just telling him like that, you know, you don't you don't have I was like, yo, you don't have to be like and I was trying to tell him what my mom told me. I was like, yo, you know, you don't have to be on Chris Sean Sloss and like all the time. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was like, and I made this um, reference to like Louis Vuitton, and I was just like, you know, when you when you go buy your girl Louis Vuitton bag, like the nigga that owns Louis Vuitton, he's not behind the register handing you the right. product, like he's somewhere like chilling. Like I was like, once you build the empire, like you can relax a little bit, you know what I'm saying? It's cool to check in, but you know, it's just dangerous to be that accessible, especially at that level. And um, and he he you know he he was you know like yeah I hear you Chuck. <laughs> I was like, yo, you know, you and your brother, like, y'all built an empire, you know, over there at Marathon. I was like, you know, just make sure that, you know, when you're there, that, you know, you take care of yourself and that, you know, you're not there as much as you used to be because, like, you made it. And um, it's not 
um, turning your back on the hood because you elevate. You just got to get to, you know, you got to sometimes you got to drive up the mountain so you can see, you know, see the city from afar. So, you know, you can really get, you know, a view of what you really need to do. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was like our last conversation. It was in the parking lot of the studio. It was a Friday before, you know what I'm saying, that wow. happened. And then so when that happened, like one of my homies hit me and was like, yo, they just shot Nip. Mm. And um, he didn't say that he was dead. And that's, so that's the first thing I asked. I was like, did he die? He was like, no, I don't think he did. And so I walked out. I put. I was playing, playing the game and I walked out um, side my crib. And I went because I live in, uh, you know, live in Calabasas now. And I and I got like this beautiful view of the mountains. And I went and sat on the steps uh, before I go down to my pool. And I just sat there and I was just asking God to like, you know, save his life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I told, uh, you know, my homie Sonic, I was like, yo, just stay in the area and just like keep me updated because I just really wanted to know. You know what I'm saying? Right. And 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 then. Um, it didn't even come until I, I think like an hour later, once I start seeing it, cause I just kept re hitting refresh on the internet, right. I was he uh, hitting refresh. Cause you know, TMZ going to come in with some type of news if it's something official. Um, and so I kept hitting refresh and then I hit that shit one time and it was like, mm. it was over with. And, yeah. um, I'm a, um, that was my, in that moment, I kind of felt like maybe how Snoop would have felt when he heard that Pac died. Mm. Because I felt like that was my equal as far as like LA, you know what I'm mm. saying? Even though I came before him and even though I had, um, you know, a small hand and, you know, him getting on Nip already, he always knew what he was going to be. He always knew where he was going. And like I said, I didn't, I didn't have to be the one to stop on Crenshaw and Slauson and take that CD right. or take him on tour for him to be who he was going to be. He was going to be that one way or another. Um, but yeah, that moment, that shit, that shit really hurts my feelings. Mm. And, and to this day, it just don't sit right with me. So I warn people all the time about this city, um, you know, the Hollywood shit, L.A., La La Land. It's the shitty trap niggas and it still lies from you. And although I love it, I hate it at the same time for all those reasons. And right. that nip shit, it hurt the city. Um, it hurt music. It hurt West Coast rap culture. And who it hurt more than anybody is his woman and his children. Definitely. Because Definitely. death is final mm -hmm. and you don't come back from that. And so that's why it really hurts me to the core because I'm the type of nigga who like when, you know, some people say like, I wish it was me. I swear, like I've been out here on my thug for 42 years. I've been trying to die in LA for like since 1979 mm. and don't take it lighthearted. I'm just with all the shit yeah. and I fully understand life and it doesn't even matter if someone murders you or or you you know you you get a uh you know a, a disease and you die that way or you die in your sleep every living thing will perish right. I'm in full understanding of that so when I'm challenged I step up right. because the worst thing is going to happen is what is the ine in, 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 inevitable mm -hmm. anyway like with everybody in this room we're going to die and we need to start having these Com these conversations with each other, with ourselves, so that we can then live our life to the fullest. Because right. you only really, really gonna live it up when you know that the end is coming. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's what it is. So the shit with Nip, I didn't like it. I was seven, sixteen, or seventeen years old when Pac died, and although that hurt, I cried because that was Tupac. Right. But I didn't know him. Right. And so I can only imagine that that really hurt Snoop. You know what I'm saying? And so Nip, I knew this nigga personally. This is one of my best friends in and out of music. Mm -hmm. Like, this is my nigga. And everybody got their relationship, you know, with Nip, like, the way that they had it. His homies and his family and all that. But I had my own personal one. Right. And so nobody can't tell me, you know, what that was. Like, he knew what it was with me and I knew what it was with him. And us being, uh, you know, staples in, LA, in the L.A. Um, hip-hop, gangster rap scene, um, see our friendship and we you know we talked all the time out not even about rap about kids about happy father's day about when the next time we gonna pull up and match one and all that shit so that shit it still don't seem it still don't seem real to this day i feel like like nip is when i hear the music i feel like like nip is i can go i can pull up on him somewhere right. um and you see after his untimely demise how 
big his legend and his legacy yeah. was. And I had an argument with Wack about this, about him saying that, um, you know, Nip wasn't a legend. Oh, he and was I'm, a legend. Yeah, and, and so I'm saying, even though, um, you know, when Nip died, it was the one album, like, that doesn't define legendary right. shit. He was on some whole different shit. Yeah, yeah, nah, he was. And so when I when I broke that down to Wack, you know, he, you know, we agreed to disagree, and then, you know, he went and thought about it, and then he came back, and he was like, you know what, you was right, but we had those moments all the time, because, you know, he gets, uh, you know, Wack is a little... You know, he get off his rocker sometimes, but I'm the only one that can talk to him. He the only one that can talk sense to me sometimes. Just be like that. Um, but yeah, man, with Nip, that shit, it hurt. It still hurt. You see everybody in here is quiet because that he gone and yeah. we here. And that's unfair to me because I feel like he should be here with us. Yeah. And, you know, I don't got no fake tears and nothing like that. Um, I got everything with me is just always authentic. And the reason that I'm drawing this out is because I'm doing my part on my friend's show, and I know we just met, but we are alive. And when I leave here, after I hug you and hug you, I get to go out and, yeah. like, see my kids and go to the studio and finish my day. And I swear I do not like that he is not here to go on with his life. And that yeah. shit hurts my fucking feelings to the core. I'm not going to even play no games with how I feel about, like, how I feel about that. It hurts that Nip ain't here. Man, that's that's for real. Man, heavy. Rest in peace. Absolutely. Um, so the last thing I want to ask you about is um, this Numenati symbol. Yeah. Um, everybody here is trying to figure out what is what is going on here. What is what is what is the Numenati thing about? Um, so you know, again, everything with me is always the guy before me, man. Um, and, and another person who's not here who would be who know who knows what Pac would have been by now. Hmm. But we all know what Pac would have been. You know what right. I'm saying? Shit, he might have, could have ran for president at this point, <laughs> right. you know, 30 <laughs> years later. Um, but Pac had this Killer Minotti thing, the seven-day theory and Machiavelli right. and all of that. And, and and again, I was in high school and I was really in 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 tune with everything that Pac was doing. He was just a rebel for the cause. And, and, I, and, and niggas like that are going to meet an untimely demise because they just, that's a dangerous mindset. I have it um, because of, you know, people, you know, the, the niggas who stomped the pavement before me. But Pac had this Killer Minotti thing. And uh, I've always loved that. It's just that I'm 42 now and I got children that are older and they understand and they're on social media. And so I wanted to make it new. And I don't want kill and death associated with this umbrella or this family that I'm creating. So it's not a record label, but we have, we make records. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a clothing line, but we have clothes to give to the homeless or to wh whoever. I bought two hats for you and Katie. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's, it's just a, it's a band of real camaraderie, friends, women, uh, men, uh, you know, black, white. It's, it's not a race thing. It's just a an opposite of the mass agenda. We don't share the same views as the government all the time. Right. We don't like what they're doing. Flint still don't got clean water. Hmm. So it's just this different mindset. It's this new. It's less erased old, like history. Everybody always wants to go back in history and say, well, and back in the day, no, now, like right. we're here now. Right. We have to do something now. We have to be for the people now. We have to change our views now. And ain't nothing like a new canvas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can always be a better person the next, the following morning because you know what you did yesterday. Right. You know, and so you have the tools to be better. So new, the new, the N and the U and um, new Minotti is just me. It's it's who I am. But then in you. Yeah, this is It's hot. like me and you. Yeah. Got you. Got Mixed you. in with everything that Pac wanted to accomplish with, you know, uh, you know, telling his story, Brenda's got a baby, keep your head up. And, right. You know, the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice and being all of that. I just don't want it to be, I don't want everything that like Rosa Parks did or everything that Just Blaze did or everything that Colin Kaepernick did or everything that we're out here doing as a people. And I'm not, it's not a racial thing with me, but I'm black. Right. So I have to stand for what I'm stand like who Absolutely. I am. So I don't want it to all be for nothing. So I just want to contribute. And so this is my new contribution to everything that I am. So yeah, um, Kat, I think it's time to close this out. Yeah, so look, 
We did your shoes. You know what I'm saying? We worked really hard. Like these even, some shoes I actually get to take with me though. Yeah, right? you can take right, them with cool, you. Cool. Like because you know sometimes, <laughs> you no, sometimes the camera cut off and, <laughs> on, on, on Wheel of Fortune and you don't get the car. You know what I'm saying? No, you get these shoes. You get these right, shoes, right, and I want cool, you to wear cool. them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or if you feel like you could put them in a the display case, you can yeah, do that too. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go in the case. I love them, okay, man. Okay, okay. Because you know we had a moment. Yeah, that's what's up. And you know this took a, a minute to make too, because yeah. you know I wanted to make, we wanted to make a perfect shoe for you that describes you, where you will look at this shoe and be like, you know what, I love that. You know, I want you to shed a tear over this shoe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, this is a one-on-one -on -one shoe for you. But if we was to make another shoe, if you, or if you was to walk into a sneaker store and you see this on, this, you know, sitting up like this, how much would you pay for this shoe? Like, what's your price on this shoe? If I'm a fan, yep. I gotta... I think it's a twelve hundred dollars shoe. All right, I like that. I was gonna say three million, but uh, you know what? Twelve hundred would do. No, for for good of really for this custom with everything that goes into it, and knowing the consumer, you know, yeah. like you know, it's a weird time financially for people, but niggas is still tricking on themselves. That's true. So it's like That's you true. know, but and so I say twelve hundred because you know niggas is buying Balenciaga tennis shoes no, and shit for the nine great. for nine hundred. So you know, <laughs> put three hundred on top mm -hmm. of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's a twelve hundred dollars shoe. For sure. Right, for sure. I like that. I like that. Oh, he got some extra insoles, too. Yeah, insoles, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you could switch them out. You could put these in. You know, this is with your lyrics, with the Or content. you insinuating that my shit get funky sometimes. No, I mean, <laughs> it may. It, it don't, may. It don't. You know what I'm saying? It's okay, because you're going to be, you know, you're going to be stepping in these quite yeah. a bit. You know what I'm saying? So if it get funky, it's cold. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the addition. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, thank you so much for coming no, out. Man. Absolutely. I appreciate you. It's been a long time. Thank Yeah, man, we really appreciate you coming out. You know, this is going to be special. I think yeah, nah, good. it's going to be good, man. Yeah. You know, if it's, if it's you, I'm showing up every time. How do you feel about it? you feel like she nailed it? Nah, I feel like I feel like she nailed it. And me, and the thing about me is, like, I'm super, super critic of everything. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I'm the nigga who get, like, five Christmas gifts and be like, I don't like nothing, mom. <laughs> like, you should have took me with you. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, yeah, nah, that was crazy, man. She nailed it. As long as you're into them, we appreciate you coming down. Nah, them crazy. I, I like the box, too. Yeah, the box is hard, right? Yeah, nah, that's it's crazy. kind of like, you can just display it just like this. Yeah, nah, them fire. I'm going to leave them in the box. No doubt. Take them to the studio, and then, you know what's crazy? It's my studio is uh, my shoe closet. Oh, where? So I got, like, my shoe. I got my shoes all around, like, on every wall, like, layered out. And then, right. you know, I record in the middle. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to just... Oh, that's hard. Yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you gotta put those right up. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, as long as, as, long as you happy, be happy. Um, it's great to see you again, man. It's been a long time. Let's, nah, not, let, let's not let this much time pass next time. Yeah, All right? my brother. Yeah.